increasing number of Republican leaders seem to be trying to compensate for their relative lack of power at home by flexing their muscles abroad. Republicans have been traveling to other countries to try to undermine the policies of the United States. You might call it anti-diplomacy. We first reported this phenomenon in June when Illinois Republican Congressman Mark Kirk bragged that on a trip to China, he had met with Chinese government officials and told them to not trust the American government on matters of the budget and the deficit. One of the messages I had, because we need to build trust and confidence, and our number one creditor is that the budget numbers that the U.S. government have put forward should not be believed. Don't believe the U.S. government, China. Congressman Mark Kirk's great idea for building trust and confidence is to tell China to definitely not trust us. But a little over two weeks ago, Republican Senator Jim Inhofe of Oklahoma made an announcement. He said that he was going to go rogue overseas himself. He says that he plans on attending the U.N. Climate Change Conference in Copenhagen this December. Uh, and it's because he thinks that global warming is a hoax. I'm going to go ahead and just announce now I'm going to go to Copenhagen. I think somebody has to uh, be there, a one-man truth squad. Senator Inhofe says the mission of his little one-man truth squad will be to tell other countries not to believe what the United States says when our government negotiates on climate change and carbon emissions. And you know, when it was just Mark Kirk going to China to tell the Chinese not to trust us, that was weird. Then when it turned out to be Mark Kirk plus Jim Inhofe, when it happened twice, sort of seemed like it might be a coincidence. But when something like this happens three times, I think it's called a trend, which makes Republican Senator Senator Jim DeMint of South Carolina, officially the trend maker. Senator DeMint is now back from meeting with the de facto government of Honduras. It's a government that the United States does not recognize. Mr. DeMint called the meeting with the military government that ousted their president there, quote, very productive, adding, we saw a government working hard to follow the rule of law, uphold its constitution, and to protect democracy for the people of Honduras. Senator DeMitt is referring to a government that ushered its country's democratically elected president out of the country in his pajamas. A government that until today allowed police and soldiers to break up public meetings, arrest people without warrants, and restrict the news media. Then today, remarkably, three more Republican members of Congress went to Honduras and visited with this government that we as a country supposedly do not recognize, thereby jumping on the go abroad to undermine American foreign policy, even though you're an American bandwagon. We just talked about this again on the show. We did see widespread celebration on the right for America not getting the Olympic bid. Yay, this international body said no to America. Yay. It was sort of rooting against America's interests internationally. Uh, And we've got this sort of active attempt to undermine America's policy goals abroad with this anti-diplomacy. Do you think that there is a sort of a deliberate decision and strategy that connects these things, or should we just see them as outbursts? Well, yeah, there is a deliberate strategy. Strategy, insofar as it, it's every every sort of step that's taken is is an uh, opportunity to try to embarrass the president, essentially, right? And 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 very crucial to the the emerging sort of conservative right wing narrative about Obama is that he thinks that you know through his sheer force of personality he's going to have other nations bend to his will, and so to whatever degree they can undermine him on the global stage is the degree to which they can kind of. Um, cut against whatever perceived global authority the president has. And that's very important because, A, I don't think they want him to be successful in reaching out in the kind of diplomatic fashion in the broad strategic sense that he's outlined because it really cuts against this sort of very jingoistic, militaristic, go-it-alone foreign policy that's been the bedrock of the Republican Party and and, and the conservative right for a very long time. (laughs) 